Peter Yan versus Aljamain Sterling is this upcoming Saturday on UFC 273, April 9th, and I can't wait to break down this bantamweight title bout. This is probably the most anticipated fight of the year for me, aside from Gilbert Burns and Hamzat Chemaev, just because of the way that Peter Yan and Aljamain Sterling's first fight went. Peter Yan was winning that fight, looked like he was changing the tide about to finish Aljamain Sterling and landed an illegal knee, hit Aljo with an illegal knee to the head. Aljamain Sterling basically couldn't continue the fight and was able to win the belt by disqualification because we saw Aljamain Sterling playing it up, acting as if he was more hurt than he really was. And it seemed like as soon as he recognized that if he was not going to continue, he would win the belt. He basically just didn't allow himself to even try to continue. Guys, I'm going to go with Peter Yan by decision. And I just think that it all points to Peter Yan winning this fight. Even if you think this fight was competitive in their first bout, like I did, I just see Peter Yan getting it done. Aljamain Sterling, Aljamain Sterling has a lot of pressure on him, guys. First of all, he was embarrassed his last time out. Half the world, half of the world's MMA fans are hating on him, commenting clown emojis on him, not taking him seriously, even though he's one of the best bantamweights. I think he has a lot of a chip on his shoulder and he has a point to prove. And I don't know if that's gonna help him when it comes down to the fight. I think Peter Yan is the type of guy who really doesn't really focus on anything external, is not really focusing on what fans are saying, isn't really reading too much into thinking, oh, everyone's saying I'm gonna destroy this guy. I think he's just gonna get in there and do what he normally does. You know, stay composed, stay calm, make reads, and capitalize towards the end of the fight. And honestly, if you look at these guys, Aljamain Sterling, I don't even know if you can say he's just gonna grapple with Peter Yan because again, he attempted 17 takedowns and only got one. Peter Yan attempted seven takedowns and got all seven of them against Aljamain Sterling. And if you look at this fight on the feet, if Aljamain Sterling is more composed and slows down his pace, that might not even work in his favor because again, one of the good things he was doing in throwing a lot, throwing the kitchen sink at Peter Yan, was that he was confusing him. It's hard to make reads when a guy is just throwing everything at you at a really high pace. But it was working for the first couple rounds. Again, he gassed out. If he's more reserved and he's standing on the feet with Peter Yan, Peter Yan's one of the best boxers in the UFC, arguably the best boxer in the UFC, some of the fastest hands we've ever seen in the UFC, and he has knockout power. He can put you on your ass, like he did to Aljamain Sterling in the first fight, and he actually knocked him down multiple times. So I don't know if this is gonna be a good idea for Aljamain Sterling to be more reserved. You know, on one hand, if he is more reserved, he's not gonna gas out, but he's gonna leave himself in more danger, and his takedowns aren't gonna be as in disguise as they would be if he's throwing 10 strikes before them, you know? But on the other hand, if he's throwing everything out there, he's gonna gas, so I don't know. Peter Yan has some wicked kicks too. I mean, you look at this guy's switch kicks to the body or kicks when he's moving out, out of range. His kicks are some of, are, are lightning, man. They're fast, they can hurt guys to the body. And again, his boxing is so dangerous. So I, I just don't like this fight for Aljamain Sterling. You know, and Aljamain Sterling, I think if he wins this fight again, it, it's either a quick flush knockout or he hurts Peter Yan on the feet, maybe with a flying knee and then chokes him out and takes his back. But it has to be early, it has to be early. Because as that fight goes on, Peter Yan ain't going to be the one breaking. If anyone breaks, it's going to be Aljamain Sterling. You know, as tough as he might be, if anyone is going to break, it's going to be Aljamain Sterling. And yeah, he gassed out early in the last fight. Even if he's more reserved, Peter Yan basically gasses everyone out, you know? So I don't see Aljamain Sterling doing so well later on in this fight. First of all, Peter Yan is 29, Aljamain Sterling is 32. You know, Peter Yan is getting into his prime and Aljamain Sterling is at the tail end of his prime as far as their age is concerned. Aljamain Sterling has had a whole year off and a surgery, right? Since their last fight, he's gone through surgery and his last memory in a fight is him getting embarrassed, dominated in front of the whole world. Peter Yan's last memory is beating arguably the best other bantamweight in the division in Corey Sandhagen, who's improved a lot since his uh, Aljamain Sterling fight. And Peter Yan beat him four rounds to one. I just don't see Aljamain Sterling winning this fight. I don't think Peter Yan's just going to knock him out in one round. I think Aljamain Sterling's going to be competitive. He is dangerous. And you know what? I would say if these guys fight ten times, Aljamain Sterling wins two or three out of ten. You know, so if Aljamain Sterling wins this fight, I will be shocked. But it's not going to be something that I just never expected. I could see Aljamain Sterling getting an upset. 
and he is a decent underdog. And that's just because everyone's saying he's going to get destroyed. But if you look at their first fight, look at the first couple rounds. Aside from Peter Yan taking him down and dropping him in the first round, those were competitive rounds. And if Aljamain Sterling is more reserved, I think he can have a better chance. But again, it can also hurt him because if he is more reserved, it gives Peter Yan more safety, more time to make reads. And I think at the end of the fight, you're going to see Aljamain Sterling in the fifth round looking gassed as opposed to looking gassed in the third round. And either way, Peter Yan's going to win the last three rounds. So if this fight passes the second round, Peter Yan 100% wins. I could see Peter Yan getting a late finish, but I don't think it's, it's that possible. And if Aljamain Sterling wins this fight, it has to be in the first round and a half. He either gets some flying knee hurting Peter Yan and then choking him while he's hurt, or gets a flush knockout. Other than that, I don't see it happening. You know, Peter Yan does get hit, but again, he's the younger guy. I think he's, he's got a better shot to win this, and you know what? Aljamain Sterling seems confident going into this rematch, but again, his last memory in a fight is him losing to this guy, getting destroyed, getting dominated, and embarrassed, and everyone's been hating on him for a whole year. He has a lot of pressure on him. You know, I don't think Peter Yan's the type of guy to, to let this pressure get to him. You know, a lot of people are saying Peter Yan's going to destroy him. That could put pressure on you to, to feel like you need to really make a statement. But I don't think Peter Yan's going to let it get to him. I think he's a stone cold, fucking ice cold guy. You know, and I think when it comes down to the night of the fight, Al Jermaine Sterling is going to be trying to prove a point. And Peter Yan, on the other hand, is just going to be trying to get that win. And I think Peter Yan is going to make it look not easy, but I think he's going to win decisively four rounds to one. That is my final prediction. So let me know who you guys think is going to win this fight.